we'll be starting our presentation. It's on preconception, low dose aspirin, and pregnancy outcomes on results from the Eagle randomized trial. Okay, so this is the outline of our presentation. We'll first start off with our introduction. Uh, we'll talk about the aim, the material and methods, results, and we have a discussion and take reference from other studies. So um, aspirin is used um, in pregnancy thus far um, for the management of antiphospholipid syndrome. Um, and it also helps to lower the risk of pregnancy-induced hypertension and helps to prevent morbidity and mortality in pre -eclampsia and also um, helps in the implantation in the case of artificial reproductive technology. So the mechanism of aspirin, aspirin actually um, binds to the serine residue on the active side. It blocks the enzyme, COX-1 enzyme, irreversibly, and it um, affects platelet activation. So this slide shows how um, COX-1 enzyme can actually affect platelet function. So in the case of COX-2 enzyme, uh, res research has shown that aspirin actually uh, causes a reduction in inflammation mainly by the, and the molecule ATL. Okay, so this slide shows how the use of low-dose aspirin can help to prevent or minimize inhibition of endothelial postocycline. Effects of aspirin on live birth. Pregnancy loss is estimated to happen in 30% of conceptions. Might be due to decreased blood flow and increased inflammation. Low dose of aspirin is often prescribed to prevent pregnancy loss in people with recurrent losses, though its efficiency is not proven. Low dose of aspirin can increase endometrial growth and vascularization in women undergoing IVF. So for this study, um, the title of the paper is Preconception Low Dose Aspirin and Pregnancy Outcomes. Uh, it's by the Lancet Journal. And the aim is to assess whether daily preconception initiated treatment with low dose aspirin improved the live birth rate compared with placebo in women with one to two pre previous pregnancy losses. So this is, uh, these are the authors for the paper. The methods and participants. So this study is a multi-centered block randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study is designed to detect 10% absolute difference in live birth rate with 80% power and a type 1 error of 5%. So they actually recruited uh, 1,228 women aged 18 to 40 uh, between June uh, 2007 and July 15, 2011. So the original, original stratum is actually to include a woman with one pregnancy loss at less than at less than twenty two, less than twenty weeks during previous year, and the expanded stratum is um, where they include women with one to two pregnancy losses, um, and no restriction on gestational age losses. So this uh, is the method and participant. So they actually divided the group into two groups, mainly one on low dose aspirin and one on placebo. So this slide shows the methods and participation. Participants were randomized according to the following categories, mainly age, race, marital status, education, annual household income, employment, time from last pregnancy loss to random assignment. So this slide shows the outcome measures, mainly the primary outcome is live birth, secondary outcome is implantation, confirmed pregnancy, pregnancy loss, birth weight, serious obstetric complications. Okay, this slide shows the approval and consent. The institutional review board at each participating center approved of the study. Participants provided written informal consent. A data safety and monitoring board provided oversight. So at the end of participation is when participation in the study ended when a woman either completed six menstrual cycle in a trial without becoming pregnant or had two periconception losses or who became pregnant and were followed monthly until the pregnancy ended. So moving on to the results, uh, this slide gives a brief um, recap of the EAGLE trial and how it's done. So basically, patients are recruited into two stratum, the original and expanded stratum, and then they are randomly uh, assigned into the treatment group and the placebo group. 
So before going on to the results of this study, uh, the authors uh, assess the similarities between the treatment and the placebo group in terms of demographics and the baseline characteristics. They found that there were similar, the demographics and baseline characteristics were similar between the treatment and the placebo group, which suggests that there were no uh, problems with the randomization and that there are no confounding factors that may affect the uh, results subsequently. So uh, the primary outcome that was considered by the EGLE trial is the live birth rates. So the overall here refers to all patients, including the original stratum and the expanded stratum. When we consider all trial participants, there was no significant difference in the live birth rates between the treatment and the control group. However, when we consider the patients in the original stratum, they, were they found that there is a statistically significant increase of 9% in the live birth rate was observed uh, when low-dose aspirin was given to the patients. So the secondary outcome that was considered by the EGLE trial was pregnancy and complications related to pregnancy. So pregnancy indicators refers to a beta HCG a pregnancy test as well as ultrasound confirmed pregnancy, while pregnancy complications refers to pregnancy loss, preterm birth, as well as a number of other uh, pregnancy complications. So uh, this is a very busy table, uh, but two uh, factors that, or two points that the authors want uh, us to take away from this slide is that more women receiving low-dose aspirin uh, had a positive urine pregnancy test and ultrasound confirmed pregnancy uh, in the overall and the original stratum. While, and secondly, there is no significant difference in pregnancy complication between treatment and the control group. So when we consider the uh, results of the primary outcome and the secondary outcome, the increase in live birth rate in the treatment group in the original stratum is due to an increase in pregnancy rates, such as an increase in urine pregnancy tests and ultrasound common pregnancy that was observed previously, rather than any change in the outcome of pregnancy, such as pregnancy loss. So uh, the EGLE trial also looked at the safety of low-dose aspirin and found and they first compared the safety symptoms uh, among the patients that received low-dose aspirin and this was found to be similar between the treatment and the control groups. The EGLE trial also found that there was no major birth defects reported and that there is no difference in proportion of minor birth defects between treatment and control groups. Three cases of neonatal death were found, two were in low-dose aspirin group and one in the control group. So uh, the EGLE trial also found, the <laughs> but, uh, also found that vaginal bleeding was more common among women who received low-dose aspirin. However, the rate of pregnancy loss was not raised in the treatment group. So in summary, um, this is the first study to demonstrate that preconception-initiated low-dose aspirin does not actually affect um, the risk of pregnancy loss or any other compli um, pregnancy complications in women without a history of a recurrent pregnancy loss. And that is defined as having just a history of one to two previous losses. And it also showed um, that preconception initiated low dose aspirin that was associated with increased pregnancy and live birth rates in women um, with single recent loss. And that is also defined as before the gestational age of 20 weeks in the past 12 months. And this the authors hypothesized to be probably due to the increased conception or implantation rates. At the same time, this paper also demonstrated well that low-dose aspirin was not associated with any increases in major adverse events, either in pregnant women, um, fetuses, or newborn babies. However, the results of this paper do not allow for any definitive conclusions to be made, and they are only at this stage hypothesis generating, um, where they demonstrated that um, low-dose aspirin might have a favorable effect on the fecundity or implantation for the subgroup of women, but at this stage, they still do, are not able to justify the general use of low-dose aspirin to increase fecundity in the absence of further studies. So to now to go on to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of this study, one of um, the strengths of this study is that it was, they had a very specific study group population who did not have a history of any recurrent pregnancy loss, but only consisted of women with only one to two previous losses, which was a very specific um, definite, defined cr criteria. At the same time, low-dose aspirin was started before conception, um, and these are one of the few studies that actually did that, and where they were able to address and look at um, important early pregnancy events such as placentation, vascularization, and organogenesis. At the same time, in this study, the design was actually very rigorous. A large number of participants were recruited, and the participants had a high adherence to a very extensive protocol. 
the trial outlines were also well defined and well documented, and participants were well followed up in this study. At the same time, in this study, women were actually block randomized by eligibility stratum, and this enabled the assessment of both a homogeneous group with strict eligibility criteria, as well as a more heterogeneous group that resembled the general population of women attempting pregnancy. Now to move on to the limitations of this study. Um, in this study, they would need to recruit more participants in order to be able to definitively exclude the possibility of serious but rare um, adverse events. Participants also tended to be of higher income and of, uh, more educated, and these results um, of this study task may not be applicable to women with a lower socioeconomic status. At the same time, 12% of the women um, that were recruited in this study were lost to follow-up, so this could have potentially introduced a source of bias. So how does the EAGLE trial correlate with the other trials that has been done in the past? We did a literature survey and listed some of the trials that has been performed using aspirins and its effect on pregnancy. Uh, we special mention to the CLAP study done in 1994 with 9,364 um, participants. There was no significant benefit of using low-dose aspirins for the treatment of preeclampsia. Um, a lot of other um, large-scale studies also show that there is no significant benefits of using aspirins during pregnancies. But we also known that low-dose aspirin improve ovarian responsiveness, uterine and ovarian blood flow, and pregnancy rates in IVF patients. Low-dose aspirin plus heparin is actually used to treat women with recurrent pregnancy losses due to antiphospholipid syndrome. And low-dose aspirin for prevention and treatment of preeclampsia. So, using meta-analysis, we put the data from these large trials and other trials together. It showed that there is a significance of the trend observed in individual trials. The use of low-dose aspirin when started early in gestation reduces the incidence of preeclampsia with the greatest benefit in women at greatest risk of developing the disease and it is useful for preeclampsia, IUGR, and preterm birth. So I've listed the, the meta-analysis results here in this table, and they show good results of using low-dose aspirins for the prevention of preeclampsia, IUGR, restrictions, and preterm birth, the latest being done in 2014, by the United States Preventive Services Task Force. Guidelines that we commonly refer to also supported the use of low-dose aspirins. Green Top, in 2011, recommends the use of low-dose aspirins in women with antiphospholipid syndrome to prevent further miscarriages. The Task Force Report of Hypertension in Pregnancy, in 2013, recommends daily low-dose aspirin to help prevent preeclampsia in very high-risk women and the use of magnesium sulfate for the severe preeclampsia, eclampsia or HELP syndrome. So will we still recommend low-dose aspirins? Well, although the EAGLE trial is recent, we should not take its result in isolation. The trial demonstrated potential benefit for a subgroup of patients, but taken as a whole, there are potential benefits to using low-dose aspirin, especially in areas of preeclampsia, IUGR, preterm birth. The guidelines that we commonly follow, the ACOG and Green Top, also supports the use of low-dose aspirins. And low-dose aspirin has been found to be safe and not associated with major adverse events in mothers, fetuses, or babies. It is also low-cost and widely available. So we think that we should still use the low-dose low aspirins for its benefits in pregnancy.